Hi, it's Trace from Purple Cats Quilting, Rimby, Alberta, Canada, and I'm in my creative studio today. I want to show you how to make bias binding a really quick and easy way, how to cut it. I know people um, you use bias binding on your quilts, it gives a better finish on the edge. I love using bias binding, especially with stripes, on different projects. And I'm going to show you a few of those projects, then I'm going to um, show you the quick step on how to make your bias binding from a meter of fabric really quick and easy. So a couple things, I love stripes, I love Tulip Pink's line works, I made tea towels when it first came out, I used stripes there. Um, we use line works and stripes for lots of different projects here. This is a Bayani's bag, this is a bag by Tara Sinclair, um, another Bayani's bag, this is Emmeline Bag's retreat bag. I just love using the black and white fabric. So way back at the beginning of COVID, we were doing some quick projects with our, with our um, quilting community and we made these design boards and so I sewed a binding onto these design boards and oh I was using every little bit of um, line works I could find and then one day when I was making them I got into the stripes and I just loved this is a project bag that we made um, a quick and simple project bag that I did a little tutorial on um, and I started using the stripes and and then there was no looking back so then, as I was moving along, I started using the stripes on diagonal. And I love how it gives that little, like a candy cane finish kind of thing. Um, it, it just is a really showy quilt. And you don't need to use black and white on just black and white. One thing that I've, that I've been playing around with the last little while is using black and white on a colored quilt. I actually did that on my garden party quilt. It's all bright colors and then I used black and white binding on the edge. So just some ideas there. I have a few of my projects here in black and white to show you. I am going to be redoing the tutorial on the project bags and on the design boards so stay tuned for that. So Tulip Pink line works in the black and white stripes. Probably our biggest seller um, I remember I used to cut this for people. They'd buy some stripes. I'd tell them about using stripes, tell them about using bias, and then I'd pre-cut it for them and send it home in a bag. And they were always just so tickled. But then they'd go like, how did you do that? So I thought with today's video, then you could always make reference to it. So we need about a meter of fabric. Maybe you have 30 inches, whatever, that's good. Um, and so here's our meter of fabric. So here's the steps. You take one corner, and you drop it to the other corner, okay? I'm going to match up those edges like that. Then I'm gonna lay it down nice and flat, smooth it out. I'm gonna bring in the sides. Now, this always reminds me of folding a diaper back in the olden days, so that'll tell you how old I am. Um, my brother was seven years younger than I was, and my job was to fold all of the flannel diapers. So this is kind of, I think that this is how we used to do it. So now the next step that I like to do, get my iron warmed up. I like to just put a little bit of starch on because if you know me, you know, I like to press everything, just fabulous. I like to pre-press this. I like to smooth it out. Make sure I don't have any ripples or anything um, when I sew it together, when I cut it and sew it together. So I'm just going to give it a nice press. So I've already pressed one. I am going to show you two ways now. We're going to go to that big strip ruler, Mr. Katz. Two ways that I do it. This is a shop ruler that we had called the Shape Cut Pro. I've had one of these forever. We can make jelly rolls with this. We can make five inch, 10 inch pre-cuts. What I like about it is it's a two and a half inch strip and it does my whole width of fabric. Goodwin Designs has some beautiful stripology rulers too that you might be able to um, use for cutting your two and a half inch strips. I always use a two and a half inch binding. So if you do a little bit different, two and a quarter or maybe 2.75, depending on how thick your quilt is, you can modify it. But I just want to show you how quick and easy this is. So I'm going to bring this ruler over. I've got this all pressed now. What the first cut you make is to cut off that folded edge. And that just comes out of there. Then I just go through the ruler like this. 
and I'll put these pre-cut stripes back on the website as a event item because we sell them we roll them up for you and we'll put them in with your order if you'd like to order one and we do that all for the cost of, of the uh, fabric so now look at this do to do to do to do to do to do to do this is how I will do it for you I will roll it up I will tie it up nice so it comes to you we put it in a plastic bag so there's no fraying Ta -da! there you've got that beautiful one meter of bias binding now your quilt might not need a whole meter but it's always nice to have it you will use that for everything so I guess we'll go back to the other table and I'll show them how to cut it traditional because not everybody has a shape cut ruler. So I have a couple here that are already pressed and ready to go. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to take your long ruler, you're going to line up on the bottom and you're going to cut off that edge. Okay. You got to cut off that edge now carefully because we always cut with the ruler and not our board right you might be tempted to try and use your board to cut with but you need to use your ruler what that means is i'm not lining up this line with that line and cutting i'm using the lines on my ruler because it's way more accurate so i'm going to take my ruler i'm going to do the two and a half there two and a half the bottom and there's my first cut slide that out of the way and I'm going to continue on so you can see where that big ruler that we use in the shop to make jelly roll stuff is really nice but it's not necessary we used uh, we're lucky to have the tools that we have and this works just great so I'm just going to finish cutting here and then I'm going to show you what it looks like and how I sit down and start sewing them together because I have a way of sewing them together that is just so easy I don't mark it I don't pin it I just sew so you'll keep cutting you can use these small pieces here you might want to save those if you've got a really big project you might have enough here you could put a small one in the middle of a big one but what happens is look at this you get these nice beautiful pieces of bias and when you cut it all at once like this it's all at the same angle so now i'm going to take it over here my trusty little bernina i always have my quarter inch foot on and so i'm pretty casual about this i just sit down and sew so i've got this one facing up so the right sides together I make sure that this is overlapped here and here and this is going to be my sewing path from here to here and so I'm just going to sew them and I think I can drive straight for two inches if you're fairly new you can pin it you can draw a line a sewing line so now this is this is the part you know when I first started I would sew my bindings and I would get them I'd go and get it all and I had one sewn on backwards um, because I've got so many strips so what I do is I, I palm it I palm it through my hand keeping it facing down and at the last moment I flip it up then I take the new one and I put it right sides together again making sure those ends are and then I can just chain I can just keep going here so I'm going to pick that one I'm going to straighten it out I'm going to sew to this corner and I just keep doing that till I get to the end I usually sew up all meter of the binding into one big roll so see I palmed it I flipped it up and I just make the binding and I keep it because I use black and white binding lots. So again, I'm putting it on. 
I'm sewing from corner, making it lie flat, corner to corner, and I will just keep doing that till I get to the end of my binding. So now I'm going to trim a quarter inch. And because I've chained, they're all attached. Now I'm going to go over to this to the pressing station. Oh. Sit down the gorge. And I'm just going to press them. So I just press mine wrong sides together. Look at that. Isn't that glorious? Can you think of all the possibilities for this beautiful bias binding? And if it's all done up ahead of time and you roll it up nice with an elastic, if you have any leftovers, you take your leftover bindings and you roll them up with an elastic. And then when you have a little project, you can just maybe go grab one and it's already made. I know people, binding is one of those things we make our quilt, we're so excited, then we get to the finishing details. And you know, sometimes those finishing details take as much time as making the quilt itself. Especially if you're going to hand sew your binding. So I'm just going to press this and then we're just going to sew it on. But look at how lovely that is. And I just want to show you something what I was talking about. Um, with the colorful quilts. This is my garden party quilt block. I chose to put, um, no, I just chose to put a facing binding on it because I didn't want to have anything around it. But I just want to show you how beautiful a black and white binding looks on a colorful quilt. So there you go, Tracy, Purple Cats Quilting, Rimby, Alberta, Canada. Please like and share this video if you found it useful. Leave some comments for me, I can answer your questions. Purple Cats Quilting, we are an online shop. Um, check us out, have a great day.